Remote and challenging, Antarctica's allure is difficult for most adventurers to resist, and now it's easier than ever for travelers to experience it. This is Susan Cozier, associate editor at Audubon Magazine. Last December, my husband Tim and I had the opportunity to travel to the frozen continent. We were taken as guests on a Chilean Navy ship, which makes trips to a number of locations, including bases manned by researchers from various countries, picking up and dropping off people and supplies. On occasion, the ship even comes to the rescue when a tourist boat is in trouble. We boarded the icebreaker in Punta Arenas and set out on our journey. From there, we traveled down the Strait of Magellan in the Beagle Channel, named for the HMS Beagle, the ship that carried Charles Darwin when he looked upon his first glaciers in 1833 and wrote, Many glaciers, barrel blue, most beautiful, contrasted with snow. We felt the seas churn for a full 48 hours as we crossed the Drake Passage, the section of water where the world's oceans collide. Eventually, we saw the first signs that we were getting close to the continent. These are the first icebergs that we are beginning to see, and the Navy officials tell us that usually they don't see them this far north. With warmer temperatures, more ice breaks off of the ice sheet and icebergs drift out to sea. A study published this past January in the journal Nature showed that the western region of Antarctica is warming significantly. But the news is not all bad. Icebergs support krill, tiny crustaceans that live below the ice. Research shows that they can attract whales, seals, penguins, and seabirds, serving as islands of productivity and providing food and nutrients to the marine ecosystem. Uh, this is just more scenery that boggles the mind every time we look at it. We don't have any icebergs around us now, but we do have some mountains. The actual, these are some of the islands surrounding the continent. Uh, and we are sh ferrying along over to the Peruvian base. At one base, managed by scientists from universities in Peru and supplied with the help of the Chilean Navy, researchers recorded the nesting conditions of Antarctic terns. We're in Antarctica at the Peruvian base, Machu Picchu is the name, and as you can see, we got to come on because there are people who are um, getting supplies for the summer when they spend most of their time researching here. At other bases, we were lucky enough to see Gen 2 penguins squawking as they collected rocks to reinforce their nests. We also saw chinstrap and adelie penguins that swam in the frigid waters and waddled on shore. Ah, he just mugged for the camera. Here we are at another one of the Chilean bases. This one is an Air Force base. We just got done with our helicopter ride uh, through the sound. And now we are at this rather large penguin colony. Feels a little bit like Happy Feet or March of the Penguins. They, they're, they're everywhere. It's the backdrop of these ice blue glaciers with penguins all over the place. They're in the middle of their, their mating cycle. So they've already laid the eggs and as we've just learned from one of the year-round residents here, the male and the female, unlike the March of the Penguins film, the male and the female split time while they're on the, the, the egg. They do two hours on and two hours off. And they go to the sea, get food, and then come back here and nest on the egg. The trip wasn't always smooth sailing. Even though we were on an icebreaker, ice fields still posed a problem. If the ice was too thick or the bergs were too large, they could damage the hull. We just made it through this huge ice field, and everybody upstairs seems to be very relieved that we got through it with uh, seemingly no damage. And uh, everything here is just on such a huge scale that right now you can barely see the ice that we went through. But we were in it for a long time, just navigating our way through the huge icebergs and sort of scraping by. After two weeks at sea, we headed for home, intoxicated by the haunting landscape of snow and ice, and in awe of the wildlife that lives there. <laughs>